I flew in yesterday from Salt Lake City, and as I got on the plane, I found my seat, I sat down, and I sat next to a woman who was a business executive. I would, she fit the part, she was wearing a great business suit, she looked exactly like that. I, on the other hand, was wearing shorts, a, a t-shirt, and flip-flops. And I sat down, and she asked the typical question you would ask when you're traveling to Orlando. She said, are you going to Orlando for business or pleasure? And I said, I'm going for business, how about for you? And she said, I'm going for business. And then she said, what do you do? And I said, I'm a keynote speaker. I'm actually speaking at an association conference tomorrow. And she looked me head to toe. <laughs> and then she asked me a very blunt question. She said, why in the world would anyone hire you to speak to them? <laughs> I was offended for a minute. And then I looked at her and I said, because I'm amazing? <laughs> and she laughed and we had a great conversation. I'm hoping I speak for her company soon. <laughs> so this morning I thought I would ask, I would start our conversation on leadership with a very blunt question for you. Why in the world would anyone follow you as their leader? Because you're amazing? I hope so. But ultimately, think about it. Everyone in this room has the opportunity to lead. Everyone in this room has the opportunity within your organization to influence and to persuade and to move people. Everyone here has the opportunity to lead across multiple departments and to influence people so that you can create cooperation and cohesion and synergy towards common goals. In many cases, you're leading and influencing people that are not direct reports to you. And for everyone here in this room, you are leading at a time of the biggest upheaval, the biggest change within the healthcare arena. And because of that, your leadership and your influence is paramount. When Ty Bennett was 21 years old, he and his brother Scott started a business in direct sales, which they built to over $20 million in annual revenue while still in their 20s. Ty has developed over 500 sales managers globally with sales and leadership in 37 countries. In his talks, Ty uses the power of influence and storytelling to provide audiences with tangible techniques that will increase their influence and their impact as leaders and as salespeople. Ty is the best-selling author of The Power of Influence, described by Stephen M. R. Covey as frank, authoritative, and informative. Ty's clients include some of the most recognizable brands in the world. Coca-Cola, Remax, Subway, Blue Cross Blue Shield, Wounded Warrior Project, Choice Hotels, and Nestle. He has even shared the stage with President Bush and President Clinton. We talked about how what we want from our people is commitment, right? That's the ideal. We want committed team members. We want people to be committed. Now when you look at that, there's two things that work towards and against commitment. You have motivation, the driving force that's going to make people more committed. And on the other hand, you have opposing forces, inhibitors, obstacles, things that are keeping people from that. This is based on a, a field of study or a hypothesis by Kurt Lewin called the force field analysis. And what he proposes is that we have to figure out which of these is more important. When you're trying to get commitment out of your people, which is more important, that they're motivated or that the obstacles and the inhibitors that keep them from being committed are removed? Which do you think would be, make more sense? Let me give you a simple story as you think about that. A couple of weeks ago, I'm sitting at my kitchen counter I'm sitting there and I'm responding to a text, so I'm looking at my phone. My fridge is right over here. My four-year-old Drew goes, Dad, can you open the fridge for me? Now, without looking up from my phone, I know that he can open the fridge. And so I said, Drew, you're fine. You can open the fridge. Just do it. And he starts crying and goes, Dad, open the fridge. I can't do it. And so I looked up from my phone. I look over, and Drew is holding five or six matchbox cars in his hands. Now I have a choice. I can motivate him. Drew, just you can do it. Try harder, push harder, you can do it. <laughs> or I can remove the inhibitors and allow him to do his job. I said, Drew, put the matchbox cars down. He puts them down, I said, now open the door. He opens it, I did it, it's amazing. <laughs> so simple, right? That's the simplest little example, but I want you to think about it. I get calls from companies every day that say, Ty, 
how do we motivate our people? How do we get our people more motivated? How do we get them to be more, more excited, more committed? The way that you do that is as a leader, you spend your time here. You remove the inhibitors, you take away the obstacles, and you build the actual ability for them to be amazing at their jobs. It's not just that they need to know what to do, they need to know how to do it. And guess what? That's where real self-esteem comes from. When somebody can be amazing at what they do, they will do it at a high level. If you're the kind of leader that understands that motivation is important, it needs to be there, but it's overrated because we don't focus enough time here. True wealth is ability. Give your people the ability to do their job unbelievably well, and they will show up and do it every single day. The reason people didn't buy into it is because people support what they help create. As leaders, we need to understand that. People support what they help create. And it's interesting as you look at the way the world is today, social media has changed our world. It's changed our world because one, it's given everybody a platform by which they can share their information. They have a stage to talk on and people to respond to. But more importantly than that, it's changed the psychological approach of most people. Where people didn't used to think their voice should be heard, now they believe it needs to be heard. And so it changes things for you and I. Top-down directives don't work. Because the old adage would say that implementation happens after buy-in. And that's not true anymore. Implementation comes before buy-in. They need to be part of it. People support what they help create. Because what happens is when you invest in people, people want to invest in you. Why? Because you and I operate under certain laws. We're programmed, we're wired certain ways. One of those is called the law of reciprocity. The law of reciprocity says that when somebody does something for you, you feel inclined to do that back to them. Have you ever had somebody give you a birthday present? You didn't know them very well. Didn't you go, ah, oh, crap. <laughs> I got to give them a present now too, right? Like you feel obligated to do it. It's just how we operate. And so what happens when we invest in people is they feel like they want to invest in us. This is so ingrained in us. My favorite study ever, this social scientist decided to see if the law of reciprocity really worked. And so he said, how can I measure this? How can I judge this? He grabbed a phone book, he opened it up, and he chose 80 random names from the phone book. He sent him Christmas cards, 80 random Christmas cards. Let me think about it, just get a random Christmas card. He wanted to see how many people would send Christmas cards back. So he sent out 80 Christmas cards. Guess how many people sent Christmas cards back? 62. 62 people sent Christmas cards back to the guy. I can only imagine they're sitting there going, is this your cousin? Is this my cousin? I don't know. He sent us one. We better send him one, right? <clears throat> That's how it works. And so as leaders, I don't think that investing in people is just a good idea. I think it is a necessary daily activity. Ty delivers customized keynotes that will make your audience feel like he is one of them. His ability to connect with the audience is based on his customized approach, interactive style, powerful insights, and incredible storytelling. Ty is the best-selling author of The Power of Storytelling, which is currently being used in graduate courses at MIT. When Colorado Children's Hospital was developing their new fundraising campaign, with a goal to raise over $300 million, they reached out to Ty to help them develop their story and train their staff and volunteers. So I figured out how to tell a story that lended me credibility. It would go like this. I would sit down with somebody who was older than me, usually had more experience, and I would have this conversation. First thing out of my mouth, I'd say, you know, I kind of feel like a young Bill Gates. And they'd kind of laugh, they'd smile, but that's what I wanted. I wanted engagement, right? And I'd say, here's what I mean. You know, Bill Gates was 19 when he dropped out of school, right? And at the time, I mean, if you remember, computers were huge. They were the size of refrigerators. They were super expensive. And Bill Gates said he was going to put a personal computer in every home in the world. People probably thought he was nuts. They were like, who's this young, naive entrepreneur? No idea what he's talking about. Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying that I'm going to be as rich as Bill Gates is. And I'm not saying I'm going to change the world the same way Bill Gates has. What I am saying is that I have something here that I am going to do great things with. And all I'm asking is you for, for you to take a serious look at it. Is that fair? Are you willing to do that? 
That was the story that I told over and over and over. I don't know how many thousands of times, but it lended me credibility to where people would actually take me seriously. My message will inspire your audience, but more importantly, it will change your audience. They will leave a more influential leader than when they walked in.